Well, good morning. My name is Rob Perks from Inspire and uh, just a few minutes with you this morning just to talk about some of the help that's available, uh, particularly to access some of the government uh, support that has been announced over the course of the last week or so, but also in general if you're looking to get finance into your business at this difficult time. What I thought we would look at is um, every aspect of finance. If you're applying for a government funded loan or whether you're applying just for a loan in the normal way, these principles hold good in all times. Uh, we'll look specifically at some of the measures that are needed in the current environment, but a business plan is going to be absolutely central to getting your funding agreed. So getting a business plan in place will be vital. And in these few days, uh, before you're able to submit applications, this is a great time to get that in place if you haven't got it already. So here we are as a quick run through of what you need to do. So section one of your business plan should really set out who you are, what you do, and what your strategy is in your market, where you're trying to take your business to, and what your growth looks like in coming years, uh, the things that you're focusing on, the channels of marketing that you're using, the clients you're trying to reach, etc. Just giving a one page, no more, of what your business looks like, what your strategy is, and where you're aiming to take your business. The second section should really concentrate on your marketing. So that's about who are your customers? Can you define who they are? It's unlikely to be everybody in the market. Who are your main customers? Second, how you're going to reach them. What marketing channels you're using, whether that be social media, whether that be email, in person, phone calls, whatever it is, how you're actually gonna reach those customers. It should also include a piece on your competitors. Who are the competitors in your market? and how do you differ from those competitors? So what is it about your business that makes people come to you as opposed to going to your competitors? Really important. And it should include where you stand out as against them. So it might be that you're less expensive, it might be that your product is of a better quality, it might be that you provide a wider range, it could be a range of different things, but where do you stand out against your competitors? Really, really important. And it should probably look at what are the opportunities in your market, where might your new market opportunities be, either in the UK or elsewhere, what might be the new products that you can deliver, what might be the new services that you can actually deliver, um, but really just an analysis of where you sit in the market, who else is out there, and why people would come to you as opposed to someone else, and how you're going to get your message across. That's really that section. And the third section, which is really, really important, is the finance section. Now this section will probably attach copies of your accounts for the last two or three years, but it will also look forwards. So just for a moment, excluding the current difficulties we're experiencing with the COVID-19, just really um, where you expect your turnover to be over the next couple of years, where you would expect your profit to be over the next couple of years, and what your cash flow forecast looks like over the next couple of years. As I say, just for a moment, ignoring, if we can, the COVID-19 situation. So broadly, how would you expect your business to look? And then in particular at the moment, obviously, you have got to have a section on how you're going to plan your finances over the next few months whilst we're in this very strange situation. Now, I know for some businesses, they're actually even more busy than usual. In, in, in what they're doing. And maybe in, in the food industry or some other industry that's essential and actually this situation has made you even more busy than usual. So your problem is less about how to manage your finances and more about how to manage the resources that you have. But if you're in the other group and there's a lot of businesses in the group where finance will be a problem because income has been reduced, sometimes very significantly by the current situation, what are you doing to pair back your costs during this difficult period. So what are you going to do for your bit to actually make your business, as far as you can, make your income and expenditure align? That will be really important in getting a loan uh, from the new government resource. So it's just showing how you're going to manage this through and the fact that you need some cash in the short term to balance the books, which is really what that's about. Um, while in this section it's worth talking about the new government measure to pay salaries, so up to £2,500 maximum or 80% of the uh, employee's wages can be met through the government scheme. You'll need to apply through your accountant or your payroll manager 
uh, who will need to input details and that will come through HMRC in due course. Uh, but you'll need to decide which employees you're going to put on furlough, as it's called, and which employees you're going to retain in the business. The ones that are going on furlough, you can then apply for that funding to cover their salaries, which should be very helpful for many businesses. At this point of, of making this video, we're still not entirely sure of the detail. So um, it, it, I know for a number of businesses it's difficult because you can't always designate specific employees and you might need them again next week and that sort of thing. So whether there will be more flexibility, we will have to wait and see over the next few days. But in the meantime, that's what you have to do. Moving on past the finance section, it's important to have a people section. So that would normally include uh, little profiles on the key people in the business, what's their background and experience. Why would an investor or a lender actually have confidence in your business? And so it would normally specify the expertise of the different people in the business, what they bring to the party and how they can help you move forward. Um, it would also include any HR policy that you have on how you're managing your people and how you're growing your business, what positions you're filling and how you see your people strategy actually working out over the coming years. And then IT and technology, really important to have a section on what IT do you need, what IT are you making use of, what digital opportunities are there for you to do things more digitally and become more efficient, artificial intelligence, perhaps if you're in manufacturing, what processes are you looking at that could be automated, and what you're looking to do in shape of investing in those technologies in the coming months. That would tend to be the IT section. Um, those really are the really, really important parts of your business plan. There may be other things, but if you do a thorough job on all of those, that will stand you the best possible chance of getting the funding that you need. Finally, if you need help with that, Inspira here to help with business, with business planning, um, you can call us on 01225 355 553. You can go to our website, which is at www.inspirebiz.co.uk, or you can email us on team at inspirebiz.co.uk. Best of luck through these difficult times. We wish you well. Do get in touch if we can help. Thank you.